Hi there. Um, I am resuming my Facebook Live posts. I was off for the last two days. I was in New York uh, negotiating some distribution for Lakshmi, our skincare line, which is super exciting. I'll have some news on that soon, I hope. Um, so I wanted to talk today about getting PR for your startup, and obviously all of my comments on this are colored by the fact that we have a social impact lens at Sama and at Lakshmi, so this will probably, uh, some of this will apply more to your company if you have a social impact. Um, so we, we've been asked a lot how we get such great coverage. I just wanted to show you guys some of the coverage we've gotten recently. This is on my site. If you can see it on my gigantic iPad. Um, so this is a story that just ran in Fast Company. Um, we've had some amazing interviews on, um, on air and then some magazine covers as well. And you can go to my site, lilajana.com, and look at the press or sama.co and look at press as well. Um, so people have asked, how do you get this, this amazing press coverage? Do you guys spend a lot of money on PR? Um, I would say it's, it's the first tip that I would have for anybody, and I have another video on this, which I recorded last week. If you go on my Facebook page, you can probably find it under videos. Um, but the first tip is, is to think about it as building a relationship. So a reporter, just like a sales lead, just like a future candidate for your company, is, is ultimately a person who you can build a relationship with and who will probably be more encouraged to write about what you're doing if they feel some kind of a connection. And so um, so that's the first thing that I've always thought with, with media relationships is just, um, is just thinking of these people as my friends and as people that I want to get to know and understand and help in some way. And, and the deeper we can forge a connection or the more deeply we can forge a connection, um, the more likely it is that any story that that person writes will be will be an interesting one, <laughs> um, and the more likely it is that that person will keep covering you. And so um, I wanted to share just one anecdote on this. I, I met Fast Company years ago. They selected us for their most creative people list, I think in, in like 2010 or maybe 2011. And so I went out and, and flew out to this event in New York and spoke there. And it was one of the most helpful events I've ever attended. We ended up getting sponsored by Cartier. Um, Sama, Sama Source did at our gala several years ago, and Cartier ended up sponsoring for three years as a result of that event. I made several friends there, and I also became friends with Bob Safey and the editor of Fast Company, who's maintained an interest in our work ever since. And then through that connection, I met several of the amazing uh, journalists who work at Fast Company, and over the years, the magazine and the digital edition have, have covered Sama on so many occasions. And I think they're also a really unique publication in that they, they really love the intersection of social impact and tech, and they also love writing about people who are non-traditional entrepreneurs in their category. So me as a, as a woman and, and as a minority, I guess I'm, I'm less <laughs> common um, in the tech world. So the first tip is building relationships, and then the second tip I would say is really understanding the audience of whatever publication or media outlet you're speaking to. And so again, you know, in the case of Fast Company, their audience really loves innovation, both in terms of technology innovation and, and doing things, you know, outside the box, but also in terms of social impact and design innovation. And so um, knowing that we. I think we forged a really strong relationship on the basis of our innovation at Sama and now at Lakshmi, and that's really helped. Um, I'm just going to answer questions as they come in. Gwen Sally asked, how do you meet press in the first place, reporters and bloggers? So um, this gets back to an earlier comment I made in the relationship building um, post, which is that you don't, or the re relationship building live video, you don't always know when you attend an event who you're going to meet there. And I've always erred on the side of saying yes to probably more things than I should because I like meeting interesting people, I like building a network, and I found that that network of friends that I have has benefited me in so many different ways professionally. Um, and, and I could never have predicted that. So I, I've met a lot of journalists and bloggers going to events, you know, showing up, going to cocktail parties for the, you know, in the tech world, um, going to going to events for entrepreneurship and technology, and then I do a lot of public speaking. I've, I've probably done more than I should have in the last several years, but again, that's really helped us because at many of these events, I'll meet journalists and then we'll exchange information and we'll stay in touch. Um, I'm just going to look to see if I have any other questions from you guys. Okay. No questions, <laughs> no questions for now, but I'll keep taking them as they come in. So um, 
The other aspect of building great relationships is having a team member, um, in our case, the amazing communications director at Sama, whose name is Ashley, um, who is really dedicated to fostering and nurturing those relationships, and then we work really well together. So um, I've been asked before whether it makes sense to hire an agency. We have hired agencies at the past in the past at Sama, and I've been really grateful that we've had amazing, you know, really talented agencies that have worked with us. Um, however, one of the challenges with an agency for a smaller organization is that to really make the most of that relationship, you, you really have to manage it well. You have to give them all the information they need to be successful, and if you're running a smaller company, Sama has, um, you know, around 75 employees, it can be really tough to invest the relation, you know, invest the money that you need to hire someone just to manage a relationship with an agency. And so what we ended up doing is meeting an amazing woman through an agency that we worked with who, after she left there, we ran into each other at an event. Another, another reason to go to events is to meet future staff. Um, and she and I kind of bonded and, and she's joined the team. And we work together basically to craft the key stories that we want to share about our organization. And, and really it's, um, it's about her then taking those stories out and sharing them with members of the media that she's friendly with. Um, and then I do the, the same thing and we just kind of coordinate our efforts. Um, so that's worked really, really well. And um, I think, you know, on the lines of that storytelling, one of the things that's critical is to make sure that your story is consistent. This is something that I didn't do before I had Ashley on our team and before we had people involved in marketing and storytelling at Sama, it was pretty much just me and I didn't really know how to do that very well, so my story was inconsistent. I would, I would say one thing to one reporter and then you know, we would kind of um, talk internally about it and decide we were going to change course, and then my board member would add to the story, and, and we were having, you know, we would we would share five different stories with different members of media, and and what you need for the public to really understand what you do is to hear a consistent message over time, repeated over and over again for six months to eight months. So the more you can be consistent in your messaging and storytelling, the more resonance you'll have with the with the public. Um, Okay, a few other questions. Um, Sherry L Lukes um, asked, "Who's helped? Who's helped me the most?" Um, I would say definitely our internal team. I mean, of course, we've had many journalists who've helped. I think of um, of, of Bob at Fast Company, who's an editor, whose team has been very supportive and written so many different stories about us. Um, I think of Jesse Hempel from Wired, who who's helped me strategize and who's just a really smart person to. Think through issues with and Kim Mike Cutler at, at TechCrunch, um, I think she just might have left, um, who's an amazing journalist in Silicon Valley. I regard these women as as friends of mine and they've helped me think about you know our strategy as an organization and how we want to do the storytelling. Um, but I'd say, you know, and I'd say their their friendship has has probably meant a lot more to me than what they might have written about Sama in the past. And um, so those, those are two people who've helped externally. Internally, um, having somebody like Ashley who I can bounce ideas around off of, and our whole management team is, in, is invested in creating the story that we go out and tell. It's a group process, and it's not just me coming up with this stuff late at night. And I think it's really important to make sure that you're, you're using your team members um, and that they're able to contribute to that storytelling to make it more effective and so that they can share it with their networks as well. Another question, did you pay for some articles or blog posts? Was it efficient? We've never paid at Sama for articles or blog posts. At Lakshmi, we just started considering that. Um, we've done one paid review where you know, you send in your products and you pay a company to give you an honest review of them. Um, that's kind of common in the beauty industry and it's m probably much more common for consumer products to do paid placement. For Sama as a nonprofit, we would never do that. Um, but we have been given sort of free spots and free advertising. Um, and I would say with Sama we've done, this falls outside of PR, but we've done, we've done Google AdWords campaigns that have done really well. And that's all through the, the Google Ads, AdWords for Nonprofits program that's been amazing. So I would say just evaluate on the basis of, um, of outcomes. And if you're thinking about paying for a blog post, we have a director of a digital at Lakshmi, Jamie, who's amazing. And he has a lot of background in this industry. So he's, 
he's familiar with what kinds of questions to ask, but basically you want to understand the return on investment. So if you're going to pay for a post, you want to understand what kind of a lift that's going to drive in your sales, and you should be able to track that um, and be able to iterate. So if it works well, then you can continue that strategy, possibly with that same channel, and if it doesn't work well, then you obviously want to cut it off as soon as possible. Um, um, great, okay, there's a question from, from Ghana. This is amazing, I hope. Hotar Fieldings that you're actually in Ghana because this would be my first Facebook Live question from Africa while I'm on camera. Um, he asks, uh, how do I navigate and build a relationship with investors who are outside of the continent I might live in and still hold their interest? Um, that's a really good question. That can be tough. I had to do the same thing but in reverse. So here in San Francisco, I had to build relationships with um, with partners in Kenya when I was first starting Sama and that was before the era of the iPhone. So it was much trickier. I did a lot of stuff on, on the phone and <laughs> just not knowing what somebody looked like. So I would say that um, the key to building relationships with people, investors or members of the media um, or anyone outside of the continent is, is consistency. So if you're sending an email and you say you're going to be calling at a certain time to actually call at that time and leave a message persistence. I had some instances where I remember I was trying to get into a refugee camp in Kenya that CARE managed in 2009 and it took me six months of constantly um, pestering the people who were in charge at the CARE office in Kenya to give me authorization to visit the camp. It was literally six months and I was calling you know, once a week and I was sending emails. So persistence helps and, and it should be professional persistence. Um, and then lastly, now you have Skype video, you have Google Hangouts, there are lots of different ways to video chat and I would highly recommend if you can't personally visit a place to suggest a video chat and then make sure that when you do the video chat that you're in a place with good lighting, probably better than the lighting that I have here, <laughs> that you've actually brushed your hair unlike me this morning um, and that you look presentable and I think that goes a long way for, for foreign investors. I, I do a lot of fundraising in Europe and so I'm, I'm finding that the video chats with potential donors in Europe are quite effective at getting our message across. Um, okay great another question from Kelly Peeler um, has speaking on panels or radio been helpful for press? Absolutely. So this is something that I struggle with because um, I'm a naturally I'm a yes person. I like saying yes to everything, especially if it involves meeting new people um, and sharing the story about what we do. And so um, because my natural inclination is to say yes, I'm lucky to have a team around me that often will say no so that I don't have to because I probably wouldn't be able to. <laughs> um, so. So I would say saying yes, especially when you're just getting started and you're just trying to tell the world about what you're doing is key. And you don't always know how speaking at a panel is going to cascade into a member of the press being in your audience and writing a story about you. And then what we found is that press creates more press. So the more people are telling your story, the more others are reading about it. And, and there's this incredible kind of ripple effect of, of media coverage that we've seen certainly at Sama and that press that I just showed you, a lot of the, the press that came in the last six months has been, you know, just this amazing, this amazing ripple that we've seen once we got some really key pieces. We were in the New York Times Magazine last year and that really helped and it's kind of cascaded. So in short, yes, speaking on panels has been helpful. I've done a little bit of radio. I've done BBC radio, which I think was, there was a piece that we did that was broadcast on NPR. Um, and I would say with certain podcasts and with certain, um, like there's a number of startup podcasts that I listen to. Tim Ferriss has one. I think Gary B has some stuff. Um, those have huge audiences and really engaged audiences that that listen actively to what's being said on the podcast and then take action around it. And so even if it's not for the press, I think those types of opportunities, of speaking opportunities, where you have an engaged audience that might care really directly about what you're doing, are really worth it. Um, I'll just share that we, we did a, a TV interview, or it was like a, I think it aired online, um, for Marie Forleo, who is a business coach. She's got something called the B-School, and she also has um, this amazing TV channel. And we heard about her because she and her organization gave $100,000 to our nonprofit a couple of years ago. And so when she asked us to be on camera, we said, obviously. But one of the things that was so interesting is that once this episode aired on YouTube, her audience was so deeply engaged and cares so much about the types of issues that we talked about on the video that we got a lot more traffic on our website than 
than we've had even with like MSNBC and major news um, outlets. So sometimes those more niche opportunities for radio or for web TV can actually yield more benefit depending on, on what you're looking for. Um, okay, I think I wanted to share um, just a few other things on the press front that we found helpful. So people often ask, um, you know, how do you use the social impact part of what Zama's mission is to, to tell the story or to win sales deals? We've been interviewing people for our sales team this last week, so it was a question I asked a lot of, of interview candidates, is how would you use the social mission to sell what we do? And if you're not familiar with the Sama model, check out sama.co. Um, but Sama Source, which is our international program, is all about winning business from technology companies and then hiring marginalized people who come from impoverished backgrounds to do the work and we, we move them out of poverty through the work. So, um, so we tell the story in the press in order, hopefully, to get more customers. And so what we found that's really interesting, and I think this is true for Tom's and for Warby Parker and some of the other new brands that have a social impact component, is that um, social impact, even though it's the icing on the cake in terms of the product or service, somebody doesn't buy Samus or services just because we help low-income people, it's the icing on the cake, right? The services have to be good, and then the social impact is what makes it sticky and why you wouldn't want to leave us. And I think the same is true for Warby Parker. The glasses are beautiful and the social